Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's project is going to be a black cherry side fan fold, and it's going to be going into the playlist of Dharma's dye swatches. Start by smoothing out as many wrinkles as you can, and then using a washable marker and a piece of string, I mark out my pattern. Now I'm going to pleat along these lines that I just drew on. And when you're pleating, you wanna to try to make that line as straight as possible. I'd say these pleats are probably about a half inch tall, maybe just a little bit bigger, but they're pretty small. The reason why I'm starting all the way out on my furthest line out is because as you work, the pleats become taller and taller. So if I started at my very first line that I drew on, the pleats would become super duper tall and then they become pretty unmanageable. So I'm starting way out here and then I'm going to work my way back in towards the center. So while you're doing your pleating, not only are you trying to keep that line that you drew on nice and straight, but you're also trying to make sure that your pleats are all the same height. That's going to give you the best symmetrical look at the end. And take your time with this step. This is obviously the foundation for your tie dye. If you create nice pleats, you're going to have a beautiful finished product. If you rush right through it and you have a bunch of different size pleats, it's just going to create a completely different look. For this one, I'm hoping to have precision. If you take your time and get this first line nice and straight, usually the rest of the project will just kind of fall into suit. So really make sure that you take your time, like I said, and get the first line done and secure. Now for this particular project, I'm showing this, this is a little bit sped up, but then the rest of the shirt, I'm gonna put it on really fast forward because I stepped away from the table quite a bit. I took some breaks because the shirt was just totally stressing me out. Um, instead of editing out like the middle part of folding it, I just decided I will speed it way up. That way you can at least see it being done. But I basically do the same exact thing that I've been doing on this first line for the entire shirt. And when I get down towards the center point, the pleats are non-existent. I mean, they were like barely a centimeter coming off the second line. And so you just want to keep on pleating until the pleats just run out and there aren't any more. Now I like to secure my projects by using rubber bands, but you could use kite string, you could even use sinew, it really is just a matter of preference. 
but I'm just a fan of the quick and easy rubber band. And I start off by securing it with larger rubber bands, but ultimately I'm going to use my tiny baby hair rubber bands to make it nice and tight. And I do have links down below in the description box for everything that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check that out. Okay, buckle up, here we go. The purple sticks that you see on the table are pleating tools, and you can get them from Jen and John over at www.boredomwithjen.com. Now there is a link down below in the description box. It's next to the Sinew Polar and Matching Caddy set, so it'll take you right over to their website. The pleating tools come in a pack of three, and I highly recommend that you get them. They come in different colors. Um, but when you're making a project like this, where the pleats become really small, they come in so handy. Also, they're very helpful because they're in three different sizes, so you can measure your pleats so that they all are the same height. If you don't have them, I highly recommend that you get them, and they're super affordable. So again, www.boredomwithjen.com. In real time, this took me 47 minutes to tie up. So if you're making one and it's taking you a long time, don't feel bad about yourself because it took me a long time too. And the more you make them, the more practice you have, the easier they become. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And I am moving away from having the black table because it really changes the way that my camera records things. That black cherry swatch doesn't even look at all like what it actually really looks like. That looks like I've laid orchid down there, but no, that is, that's black cherry. So for the setup, I've placed my shirt down inside of a gutter and I got this gutter at Lowe's. It came in, I think they were nine foot, maybe 10 foot strips. And then I used a saws all to cut it down into manageable size pieces. Um, so I have, different sizes. I've got like one where I just cut it in half and then I took another gutter and I cut it down into thirds and so on. So I have different sizes for different projects. Scott Walker has been talking about going to your like local recycling center, uh, like the scrap yard. Um, and you can get yourself some bigger gutters for free maybe, or at a discount or call your local gutter shop and see if maybe they have some scraps laying around their warehouse, which I need to do, but it's a really, really good idea. So these gutters are vinyl and they're terrific and they're white so I can see if they have dye stains on them and I can clean them, but they're shallow. They're only about two inches. So if you have 
really tall pleats, it's hard because um, to fill it up with ice, there's not much room. But with the kind that Scott Walker uses, it's a five inch tall gutter, and so you can add lots of ice. So if you don't already have these vinyl gutters, maybe take the advice from Scott and get some scraps and try to get the deeper gutter. And when I find some, I'll talk about that more. So now what I'm doing with my die is I'm just going for it. I didn't measure it out or anything. I'm just spacing it out, maybe leaving, what, about an inch and a half in between each stripe. Um, that way, the white space is going to allow for the die to breathe. You know, it's gonna be able to show us some splits. At least that's what I'm hoping for. I create a little dam down at the bottom of the gutter just to hold back the ice using a silicone cake mold and some clothespins. And I learned that from Greg over at Goyo's Garden and Tie Dye. And I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. And then I'm going to add my ice. And I'm using my Frigidaire Nugget Ice Machine Ice. And the machine is terrific, you guys. I've made major improvements to it. It doesn't leak and it doesn't make any noise. I highly recommend it. And I start by adding my ice while the project is still flat on the table. That way it doesn't knock any of the dye loose. You see here how I've just cleaned up the table because I don't wanna get dye on the bottom of my tote. Now I have the project on an incline. So the center of the shirt is up at the top of the incline and I don't want it to be a steep incline so I put an empty dye jar down at the bottom to prop it up. And then I just continue to fill up the project with ice. It's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. And this project batch for the full 48 hours. Now it's time for the rinse out. You want to start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then increase your water up too hot. And rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine, and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon, a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft, which is a professional fabric softener. Then I put it in the dryer, and I'll iron it, and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our single color ice dye in the shade Black Cherry after it's been washed and dried. And this shirt turned out amazing. I really do love Black Cherry. It is one of my favorite colors and I definitely recommend it to have in your arsenal because it really is a beautiful go-to color for like a nice sort of dark purple color. So it splits down into some really gorgeous tones. There's the obvious dark black cherry color where it's highly concentrated and then it just splits down and dilutes into some beautiful soft pinks, lavenders, even some yellow in there, a little bit of gray tones. It just overall is a really gorgeous color and I wish these side fan folds weren't so laborious. I would definitely make more of them for, um, for the single color swatches, but they take a long time and I don't enjoy it. And what do I always say? Have fun tie dyeing, because that really is true. You need to make what you love and what makes you happy. And spending 47 minutes tying a shirt 
It doesn't necessarily make me happy. But you know, if I don't practice, I won't get better at it. So, but look at how beautiful that is. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. And then here is the liquid swatch against the ice dye. So you can see the difference in what Black Cherry is capable of. So I'm in love. What do you guys think of Black Cherry? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.